I was pleased to lead the Dignity Delegation that was able to provide an eyewitness report to the people of this country and to the people, peace-loving people of the world. But I have to begin by saying shame on ja John Lewis. Shame, shame, shame on John Lewis. Shame, shame on John Lewis for shame, voting to finance shame, war against African people. Shame. Hey, you in the way, brother man. You in the way. At a time when the I need somebody to hold this. Here you go. At a time when the American people have been asked to tighten their belts, teachers are receiving pink slips, the vital statistics of the American people reveal a health care crisis in the making, and the U.S. government is in serious threat of default, our President and Congress have decided that a new war, this time against the people of Libya, is appropriate. This comes at a time when the U.S., by one estimate, spends approximately three billion dollars per week for war against Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm. The President and Congress continue to fund the war against Libya despite the fact that Secretary of Defense Robert Gates announced that the U.S. had no strategic interest in Libya and despite the fact that the Senate Chairwoman of the Select Committee on Intelligence admits that the U.S. really does not know who the rebels are while the rebels themselves according to a Telegraph report of March 25th, admit that Al-Qaeda elements are among their ranks. So while the apparatus of our government has been used for over 10 years to inform the American people and the global community that Al-Qaeda is an enemy of freedom-loving people all over the world, our president chooses to ally our military with none other than Al-Qaeda elements in Libya and other people whom U.S. intelligence say they do not know. Additionally, U.S. Admiral Locklear admitted to a member of Congress that one of NATO's missions was to assassinate Muammar Gaddafi. And indeed, NATO bombs have killed Gaddafi's son and three grandchildren, just as U.S. bombs in 1986 killed his daughter. NATO bombs just recently killed the grandchildren of one of Gaddafi's associates in a targeted assassination attempt. Targeted assassination is not within the scope of the United Nations Security Council resolution. And targeted assassination is against U.S. law, international law, international humanitarian law, and international human rights law. Targeted assassination is also a crime. We certainly cannot encourage others to abide by the law when we so openly break it. Yeah. While in Libya, I witnessed NATO's targeting of civilians. NATO bombs and missiles landed in residential neighborhoods, hit schools, exploded near hospitals, destroyed parts of the public broadcasting infrastructure, and narrowly missed killing students at al Fatah University. When civilians are targeted in war, or low kinetic activity, crimes are committed. NATO practices in Libya are exactly like Israel's practices in Gaza. Right. Fishermen right. are killed as they go about their fishing business. A naval blockade allows arms to flow to NATO's Libyan allies, but stops food, fuel, and medicine from entering non-NATO ally held areas. The entire population suffers as a result. Collective punishment is illegal when Israel practices it, and it is also illegal when NATO practices it. Yeah, right, right. NATO and the hyperbolic press accounts have introduced a kind of race hatred that the Libyan people have been trying hard to erase. Approximately 50% of Libya looks like me. Innocent, darker-skinned Libyans have been targeted, tortured, harassed, and killed. The people of Libya has, have the right to self-determination. They have the right to resource nationalism. They have the right to live in peace. They have the right to determine their future. And they need not exercise their rights underneath the shock and awe 
of NATO bombs and missiles. Death Thank to NATO! All right. All right. Death to yeah. NATO! All right. Death to NATO! Long live Libya! Long live Gaddafi! All right. Death to NATO! You know how much time?